Hi. Welcome to this Blender video tutorial entitled Primitive Mesh Objects. Blender provides a number of primitive mesh objects that can be used as a basis for further modeling. Often objects are modeled by first adding a primitive mesh to the scene and then subdividing it, extruding it, or combining it with other manipulated primitive objects. Blender provides 10 primitive mesh structures. To demonstrate, I will first delete the default cube object from my Blender scene by selecting it and then clicking on the X key and deleting it. I will then press NumPad 7 to enter top orthographic view. Primitive objects are added to a Blender scene at whatever point in 3D space your 3D cursor is located. The 3D cursor is this target-shaped icon that is placed by left-clicking on the 3D viewport display. To see exactly where this 3D cursor is located in 3D space, I will open up the right 3D viewport panel. In the view panel, the exact position of the 3D cursor is noted. Notice how the position changes as I click in different parts of the top view display. My cursor position changes in the X and the Y axis, but not in the Z axis. Here I'll press NumPad 1 and go to Front View. Now my cursor position will change in the X and Z axis, but not in the Y axis. An easy way to position your 3D cursor exactly is to type in the X, Y, and Z position in the 3D cursor control. Here I will place it at three Blender units X, Y, and Z. An easy way to set your 3D cursor at XYZ 0.000 is to press Shift C. This sets the cursor at the X, Y, and Z zero point. I'm going to press Control up arrow and go into full screen so you can see this better. To add a primitive mesh object, press Shift A. This brings up the Add menu. Select Mesh and then the primitive object. Here I will add a UV sphere. Notice that the center point of the UV sphere is at the position of my 3D cursor when I added it. Immediately after you add a primitive mesh object, a new temporary panel opens up at the bottom of the left 3D viewport panel window. I'll open this up a bit so you can see all of the contents. I'll also zoom a bit on the 3D viewport so you can see this better. Note that by default the UV sphere has 32 segments, which are like longitudinal lines, 16 rings, which are like latitudinal lines, and has an overall size of one blender unit. Note that the location and rotation, in this case zero, is also noted. By default, all primitive objects are added to a scene as if they were added in top view no matter which view you are actually in. Thus, a UV sphere will always, when first added to a scene, have its poles aligned to the Z axis. Now you can edit the options for a primitive mesh object in the Add panel. Here I'll set the segments to 18. I'll set the rings to 12. I'll set the size to 2.5. And I'll set the rotation to 45 degrees along the y-axis. You can continue to edit these controls until you deselect the object, or select a different object, or tab into edit mode. I'll deselect the UV sphere by clicking on the A key. Notice that the Add panel on the left disappears, and reselecting the object does not make it return. Once you have deselected the object, any transformation to the object needs to be made through the many Blender transform tools. I'll place my 3D cursor here to the left of the UV sphere and press Shift A and add a cube object. A cube object has six equal sides. Notice the Add Cube control settings. I will press NumPad 7 and go into Top View, place my cursor to the right of the UV sphere, and then press Shift A and add an Icosphere mesh, mesh object. I'll zoom in a bit so you can get a better view. 
An icosphere is a sphere made up of triangular faces. By default, the subdivisions are two. Increasing the subdivisions makes the icosphere appear rounder and smoother. I'll place my 3D cursor below the icosphere and add a cone object. I'll rotate my view so you can see this more dimensionally. Increasing the cone's depth increases its height. Notice that the cone is open at the bottom. I can cap the end of the cone by checkmarking the cap end checkbox on the add cone controls. I'll press numpad 3 and switch to side view. I'll place my cursor behind the UV sphere and add a torus object. I'll rotate this view so that you can see it better. A torus is a bit like a donut or a tire. It has a major radius that can be adjusted and a minor radius that can be adjusted. I'll place my 3D cursor on the other side of the UV sphere and add a tube mesh object. Notice that by default the tube object has its ends capped, so it looks more like a cylinder than a tube. I will uncheck the cap ends in the Add Tube Controls. I'll go back to Top View, Numpad 7, <clears throat> and add a monkey object. The monkey object is a special mesh object. It's kind of a blender mascot. Its name is Suzanne, and it has appeared as a mesh object in all versions of Blender. The monkey object is often used as a demonstration object. In fact, I use it frequently in my video tutorials. Before I demonstrate the remaining primitive objects, mesh objects, I'm going to hold down my Shift key and select all of these objects and press the X key to delete them. I'll then press numpad 7 and go to top view. I'll then press shift C to return my 3D cursor to 0.000 XYZ. I'll then press shift A and add a plane object. The plane object is a two-dimensional mesh object. It only has dimension along the X and Y axis. If I press numpad 1 and go to front view, it appears as a line with no Z dimension. I'll numpad 7 back into top view. I'll place my 3D cursor here uh, to the side and add a grid object. A grid object, like the plane object, is a two-dimensional mesh. It looks very similar to a plane object. The difference is that the grid object is by default subdivided into 100 faces, 10 X subdivisions by 10 Y subdivisions. You can see this by pressing the Tab key and entering Edit Mode. I'll tab out of Edit Mode and select the Plane object and tab back into Edit Mode. Here you can see that the Plane object only has one face. The grid object is often used as a base for creating landscapes. I'll tab back into object mode, place my 3D cursor here, and add the final mesh object named Circle. And I'll zoom in a bit so you can see it better. The Circle object is like the plane in the grid objects in that it is a two-dimensional mesh object. Notice, however, that it is not filled and thus we can see no face. You can fill the circle, giving it a face, by checkmarking the Fill check bo Checkmark box. I will also checkmark the uh, Enter Edit Mode checkbox, which places the circle mesh in Edit Mode. Uh, note that the face is actually a series of pie-shaped faces, in this case 32. You could change the number of faces by changing the vertices number in the Add Circle Controls. Here I will change it to 12. I'll tab back into object mode and delete the circle and the grid mesh objects. Now sometimes you may want to start with a single vertex and extrude it into a particular shape. 
Now, Blender does not have a single vertex mesh object. However, you could create such a single vertex object by first adding a plane object, and then tab into edit mode, press the A key to deselect the vertices, hold the shift key down and select three of the vertices, press the X key and delete those vertices. This leaves you with a mesh object consisting of a single vertex.